For the tremendous development and progress of this amazing area, coupled with its usually pleasant climate, has brought a never-ending stream of population pouring into Los Angeles and the surrounding communities. King Citrus in California lasted about 100 years. Images of an idealized California drew increasing numbers of people to California to live. As a consequence, we began to grow houses in the fields instead of agriculture and oranges. The streets were laid out so neatly around the super modern shopping center. People in the military seeing what a great climate uh, Southern California had then and still has, they told their families, let's move to California. It was a weird juxtaposition that here we have the most urban county in the nation that was once the most agricultural county in the nation. We're in direct competition with our vegetables. People and vegetables like the same kind of climate. We thrive in the same places, so we won, but not really, because now we're having to bring our vegetables from far away. After World War II, the defense industry and aerospace started to come here, and they discovered all the wonderful things that were here. Lots of open space that was flat, that was good for development, a good place to have businesses because there was a, an international airport developing. And a lot of these developers who had gobbled up some of the land during the war to sort of hold on to it were now able to market it. And so by the end of the 1950s and surely by the mid-60s, there was little, if any, farmland left here. Ultimately, to make a city in this improbable place, you had to keep reinventing what was going to be economically viable. And so there's been a series of successful gambits. Ultimately, what was most valuable crop here was a front lawn. You know, what we're doing is growing real estate. These are California Concord grapes. The vines were planted in 1925 from slips they got from my grandfather Smith in Inglewood. So sweet this year. Plenty of sunshine and plenty of water. Years ago when I was young, we would uh, sell grapes here to people who wanted to make Concord grape jelly and they'd want them with a few green berries on so they wouldn't have to buy too much pectin. And this was during the Depression days when money was scarce. I'm looking across the street at the new Bank of Hope. That was formerly a hatchery for baby chicks and geese and ducks. To my left over here was what was left of an old walnut orchard. That was open land right here where Nissan is. They put the freeway through one parcel that I was farming uh, there uh, where their high-rise buildings are on the south side of the freeway today. The two large Japanese farmers who actually own land adjacent to where I was farming, they couldn't resist the high offers, so uh, they sold out and then moved their operations to Orange County. When the price became too exorbitant to resist, I never heard of anyone saying no. In 1921, my grandfather and his partner bought this 15 acres, which was a dairy at the time, so buildings, dairy herd, the whole thing, 200 bucks. 30 years later, he was able to parlay this 15 acres into 200 acres over in, uh, in Anaheim, right on Euclid and Catella, which is about a half a mile from where Disneyland is now. The story goes that Walt came down uh, to meet with my grandfather uh, at the house there on, on uh, Catella, sat down in the, in the kitchen at the kitchen table. My grandmother made sandwiches for them, and Walt and my grandfather uh, worked out a deal. Walt offered him $1,600 an acre, which was an enormous profit over what he had just spent to buy the place a few years earlier. So they came to a handshake deal, and then apparently the guys down uh, by the freeway, or the soon-to-be-built freeway, got really agreeable at that time, and Walt was able to put the park where he wanted to. Because Walt put the park where he did, 
all this old farmland around there began to be developed. And within a couple years of the park opening, some developers came and offered my grandfather $4,500 an acre for the same property. And I, that's true for a lot of guys around here that, that sold to developers. The world changed really, really fast. One of the remaining remnants of our agricultural past in Los Angeles is this amazing sycamore tree in Compton. It's a very old tree, and it was one of the boundary markers of the Rancho San Pedro, which was one of the original ranchos in Los Angeles County. It was a huge expanse of land. This tree, they call it sycamore, but I know that everybody knows this tree like eagle tree. Channel 28, I hear, you know, this tree is like landmark between uh, Mexico and the uh, United States. It's central land landmark. I was looking for a house, you know, and uh, the real estate showed me this property. I see that tree, very nice tree, big tree. Uh, made around 90 feet tall, 200 feet tall. All my family, they enjoyed the shade for this tree. It's part of our history. It's like uh, George Washington's cherry tree, I suppose. And it obviously takes us back to a past that incommensurate. It's hard to really imagine a landscape where we needed to use trees miles apart to know where we were. Now we've laid a grid over, over the entire place. It's literally a link to the deep past of this region. So we did this, we paved the river, we paved over those watercourses so that we could have a stable real estate landscape. And the irony is, of course, when you pave the ground, the water runs off and you have an even bigger flood threat, you have to pour more concrete. Also, you dry out that ground. A sycamore growing in that part of Compton, ultimately, the groundwater is going to disappear and that tree's going to die. We are at Seal Beach, California at the Naval Weapons Station. They've had agriculture here since the station was established during World War II. And I've been here uh, for a little over 30 years now. Presently, I am still working six days a week with my farming operation, which consists of 2,000 acres of garbanzo beans, barley, and lima beans. Since I'm at the Seal Beach Weapons Station, as long as it is the only weapons station on the West Coast, it's not likely that it will be downsized or discontinued. It's a win-win for the Navy because the Navy makes a little bit of money from, from the outleases, but it's also all this land does not need to be mowed, it doesn't need to be maintained because uh, the farmers are taking good care of it. It's one of the few places where there's open space where we can actually do agriculture these days in Orange County. There's not many green spaces left, and the new weapon station still be just 5,000 acres, but it's 5,000 acres of open space. It's become a blend of urbanization and farming, but as the population continues to increase, it's going to put that much more pressure on the resources that we all have to share to continue to do our job. And uh, I think it's going, to, it's going to get worse from a farming perspective. We know from some 1940 statistics produced by the Los Angeles Chamber of Commerce that at that time in 1940, up to half of the produce eaten in the city of Los Angeles was produced within 50 miles of the city. Today, we really have no idea how much that would be, but it's gonna be a very, very small percentage, maybe less than a single percent. When rapid urbanization started taking place and it's been unabated until now, and it doesn't look like it's going to slow down in the foreseeable future, I can only say that agriculture is gonna to have to find another area to move to.
funding of this presentation is made possible by the California Institute of Contemporary Art.